Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the E-Flight A10 Warthog. In this video, we're gonna unbox it. We're gonna take a look at all the parts and pieces. We're gonna talk about the new features because this is the version two. I had the version one, so I'll be able to add a lot of clarity to what's changed, what hasn't, and things to keep in mind. So coming up next, we're gonna see what's going on inside the box. Here's what this looks like out of the box. And of course the nose is up because I do not have a battery in there. But this thing is looking good. The paint looks better in person than I thought it was going to. I still prefer the other version, the version one paint, but this this will grow on me, I guarantee it. And here is a look at the six bladed fans on these 30 millimeter EDF units. Now the version one that had 28 millimeter EDF units and these are 3S compatible and the previous ones were 2S compatible. So that is awesome. The performance on this, the airframe is the exact same size. They did add some weight, but they also strengthened things that needed to get strengthened, which is huge. And when we come back, I'm going to show you some of those things. Here is a look at the upgraded landing gear. It looks like they've got a little thicker wire, added some bends for strength, worked some engineering magic there. Looks like the mains also look a lot nicer and better. Also, I can't remember if the version one had that uh, extra strength in the main wing, but this one has it and Overall, this plane just feels so much more stout. It feels more like an A10 wood, which is a huge thing for me. I love the real ones, so that is awesome. And we've got some carbon fiber reinforcement in the horizontal stab too. Right now, we're looking at the very first con that I see. And that is a missing magnet in the fuselage. The canopy has two magnets but the fuselage does not. And I checked in the box, I looked all over, I looked on the floor, all over to see if I could find that missing magnet and nada. I also have the recommended smart pack in the fuselage here, in the battery bay. And that's what it looks like. I have not measured the center of gravity yet. I haven't even added Velcro to the smart pack yet, actually, so. Let me gently pull this out of here. Oops. There we go. Check the link in the description for everything, guys. I made a big investment in the smart stuff, and if you click on the links in the description, it gives me a small commission and helps fund the channel so I can do things that help you guys out. That's my entire goal, so keep that in mind. I've got the radio set up. And we are looking at the smart information. So to obtain that smart information, all you need to do is use the roller, the toggle, and get that information. We're gonna wrap things up now with our pros and cons for this cool little UMX A10 Warthog. As far as the pros go, the upgraded EDF units are awesome, 28 millimeter to 30 millimeter. Big thumbs up for that. They also have 3S power handling. Big thumbs up for that as well. This plane can also take advantage of a number of smart features with its IC2 plug with a appropriate battery. Can still do some of the basic telemetry even with dumb packs, just like my UMX Turbo Timber. So that is cool. Either way, there's, there's some telemetry stuff you can use feeding back to your radio. That is awesome. The landing gear have been improved. And that was a massive weak point of the version one. So that is great. You're not forced to hand launch it. As long as you have a relatively smooth surface, this looks like it is gonna get the job done as far as the landing gear goes. It has also been strengthened throughout the fuselage, the wings, kind of when we took that tour, uh, I showed you some of those things. So that is great. As far as the cons go, the magnet was missing from the fuselage to hold on the canopy. Not cool, I'm still probably gonna fly it. 
and because the other side seems reasonably strong enough and I'm not gonna let that prevent me from flying this thing. I've waited a while and I'm excited to fly it so when I'm able to fly it, I'm going to. The other con, and it will be for many, not everybody though, is the EC2 connector. A lot of people have the JST uh, plugs that they use for their UMX citation and other planes and quads and such. So having the IC2 connector, it's a little proprietary. You can cut it off. You can use an adapter, all those things. But for those that didn't expect that, they're not going to like that. So guys, keep that in mind when you buy this. Speaking of buying it, if you did get some value out of this video, check the links in the description and, and or visit gblinden.com to help support me either way. With all that being said, like, comment, and subscribe. And GB Linden, out.